Thanks for coming in, Dr. Patterson. Nice to see you again. Um, this time last year, you and I were trying to establish what percentage of isotope production at the present time, current isotope production, is for domestic use, strictly within Australia, and what percentage is for the global market, including near neighbours like New Zealand, South Korea, and so on. So what I'm trying to establish is of our current isotope production, what percentage is used domestically and what percentage is sold overseas. Thank you, um, Senator. The, uh, the production of isotopes as it leaves the facility at, at, at Lucas Heights uh, allows us to determine the relative amounts that go to different uh, jurisdictions. But because of the different travel times, different amounts actually finally are deployed in, in those jurisdictions uh, because of the decay effect. Sure. And so uh, we would be very happy to provide you with an end of production number for the facility as a whole. But because of the fact that this is a real market with real prices and real volumes, uh, we would really not be in a position to uh, disaggregate that in too much detail because it would have implications for the market. Is it because you don't know, i.e. you're selling to third parties who then may or may not export it, or because you do know and are unwilling to put that to this committee? We make estimates, Senator, but yep. we don't publish those estimates uh, because those estimates have got market relevance for other actors. I thought markets required all participants to have a reasonable amount of information so that they could function properly and set prices. When we meet in the high-level group on radio uh, isotopes in uh, Paris, uh, that is the position that Ansto takes. Unfortunately, that transparency has not yet come through to this market. But we're firm believers that as that transparency comes forward, and as there's agreement about how those uh, uh, proportions are, are, are disclosed, uh, that we would be in a position to disclose them. So we, we share a common view that there should be more transparency in this market. Sorry, I might have missed a step. Who is it in Paris who says that we can't do this? So the high-level group on medical radioisotopes is a multi-country negotiating forum as to how we move this from being a subsidised market to being a true uh, market with the appropriate rules of market transparency. How can we be sure that cartel-like behaviour is not occurring if we're not given any information about how prices are set? There is a voluntary disclosure process. Uh, at the moment, two countries uh, fully disclose uh, where they are with um, the production side. Uh, the one is South Africa and the other is Australia. So, sorry, okay, so we do know or we don't know how much is exported? It just feels <coughs> like I've, I could find this out for iron ore. Oh, uranium is obviously a bit of a separate example. I could find this out for bauxite or iron ore or any other commodity yep. or any other... <clears throat> so we, we don't know formally for, for if one takes the Dutch, the Belgian, uh, the small amounts from Poland, uh, the um, ANSTO contribution, the South African contribution, um, it is not possible at the moment to determine in a clear way with one set of rules what the uh, export volumes are. Um, in a way that would truly be transparent. Okay, I'm st I wasn't expecting to be hung up on this, so apologies that, that I'm dwelling here because I've got a few other questions, but it's not possible or it's not part of the agreement? They, they feel At like the moment, full things. agreement has not been reached uh, as to how that information is disclosed. Got it. And therefore, it's not possible in a commercial sense rather than it's not physically possible. Yeah, it could be it, done. It, in principle, one can do the calculation and link it back to universal time and then you know how much you've got at a certain second of the day, yes. Yeah. Oh, we need to be quite that precise. I'm yeah. just looking for a rough orders of magnitude. Anything you're able to provide us on notice that would give us some understanding, I think, the taxpayers who are funding your plant deserve to know how much is exported and how much isn't. Sounds like we're of the same we, view. We, we, we will we'll seek to do that. We'll also, uh, I think, be able to do, uh, find publicly available information about the size of the market as a whole. Yeah, that wouldn't. That would take the rest on notice. Yeah, if you could. My next question, which might end up falling into the same category, is your future production estimated from the proposed 50, uh, Building 54 plant. Assuming Australia's demands aren't likely to change dramatically, and tell me if that's not the present trend, then what percentage would be used domestically and what would be sold for export? So we'll I'll take that on notice. Those two up. Yeah, present, present production and potential future production. The Synroc plant, I understand, has been licensed. Construction was due to begin in 2015. Can you just give us an update of what's happening there? Yes, Senator, I have briefed uh, this committee on that. Um, the timescales for the Synroc plant are, are not the... Uh, the driving force for this project, it's when, the engineering when did you maturity. Brief, when did you brief this committee? Um, I think we briefed it. It's about a year. We'll, we'll, we'll draw the record. Um, a year? But it, it's 
about a year ago, I think. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Oh, well, um, what's happened since then? So the, the, the Cinerock plant um, is going through uh, its design engineering uh, stage. We are building a cold demonstration facility um, uh, at the Lucas Heights uh, site. Uh, that demonstration facility will uh, operate at one level in the second half of this year and will continue uh, with a slightly different uh, arrangement of equipment in, in the first half of next year. It's, attend it's intended that by the end of 2019, the plant will be ready for operations, having gone through cold and hot commissioning. And the cold and hot commissioning, the hot commissioning material will come from the building 54 intermediate level liquid waste. But there'll be no requirement to um, take waste from the new facility because it has a two year decay period. Uh, so you have to warehouse it for that before period. Before it goes, time. so we have holding tank capacity for that. Yeah. But you must have substantial residues of material that has gone through that decay process that you could start experimenting on. Yes, that's a building 54 material that's as well. What you, yes, but one would not want to have people waiting around for two years watching a plant after you've got your hot commissioning uh, license. You really got to time it to minimise cost and maximise the throughput when it does come. Okay, so hot commissioning or. I don't get to call it commercial scale Sinrock gasification, but when you would have it to its capacity, say, when are you anticipating that? So the hot commissioning would be uh, to test that capacity statement and to, to demonstrate that, uh, that that would take place, and that would take place in the second half of 2019. 19, thank you. And even that, if you get it running to capacity, that would be considered a pilot plant, wouldn't it? That's still to just uh, no, test the process. No, it's, it's, it's not a pilot plant in the sense that it will be able to treat the waste from the nuclear medicine facility and eventually the historical uh, waste from Building 54. Mm. And therefore, from a nuclear medicine perspective, it is a, a commercial scale uh, nuclear medicine waste facility. Will that be the first of its kind in the world? It will be the first of its kind in the world. All right. Just in the interest of time, because there's other senators piling in and we're on the clock a bit, could you provide us on notice with your estimated um, throughput, the volume throughput in, a, in an annual um, production cycle, if you will? or disposal cycle, and however you will measure the economics, whether it's dollars per kilogram of material glassified yeah. or whatever your metrics are, just to give us some idea. And then finally, how long it would take to treat the inventory of the waste that would be appropriate for, the, for treatment in this manner that's in the Australian inventory, I guess. Thank you, Senator. We'll, we'll take uh, that on notice. I will say, however, that there's some commercial interest in these plants from other nuclear medicine facilities. Oh, and so we I might so. have to take some care and give you a range of numbers on the cost of the waste. The more you can provide, the better. And I'll move on, but I think you've got the gist of what I'm... Yes. Oh, but as indicated, there is some keen interest to Second. use this technology more broadly internationally, which is quite exciting. So. I would hope so. All right, a couple more just on transport, if I may. What are the updated timelines for proposed transport of opal reactor irradiated nuclear fuel waste to the US? So the... Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, there have been uh, developments which we've uh, taken over the last year to um, uh, identify a cheaper and more um, integrated waste management strategy for the waste. So the first waste return will take place during uh, 2018, towards okay. the middle of it, but it'll go to France. And indeed, all of the waste from the full operational life of the reactor will go to France and will be returned to Australia with one less shipment than would have been the case if we'd used the US solution as True. well. Is that breaking news or has that been in the public domain for a while? I think it's been in the public domain okay. since about November okay. last year. All right. Um, just give us, if you could, a thumbnail description of why we've abandoned the US reprocessing agreement. There were three reasons that we abandoned uh, the US process. The first one was that the um, proposal that was put to us by uh, Arriva, the French company, was a more integrated solution okay. of lower cost and one less shipment. All of those seemed to make sense. Yep. The second thing was we could not get a, um, an absolutely deterministic date uh, from the fuel return program in the United States. Right. And then the third element was that we reached uh, a consensus with our colleagues from the US that, uh, that if we did uh, use the French option, it would not in any way deteriorate our relationship with them. Commercial or, or otherwise. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, that's useful. Um, was, did you ever consider a no reprocessing option in terms of cost and efficiency of storage? Or was it, oh, I'll just leave it at that, was a, a no shipment and reprocessing option considered? 
I think uh, if one looks at the life cycle cost of uh, storing spent fuel relative to the reprocessing and return, we think that the life cycle cost is lower and it's a better disposition of the, of the fuel. Does the surplus enriched uranium and plutonium that would be extracted from the fuel, what's to become of that and would we just roll existing agreements with the, the French That government? is, uh, the agreements we have with the French is that that will go into a civilian uh, mixed oxide fuel program. So they eventually put it into reactors and burn it further. Eventually, meaning never, but that would probably need a, another couple of hours of, of evidence, and it's probably a bit off, off my brief. Um, so timeline, I think you said 2018. Have you got a, to the nearest month? Sorry, Senator. Yeah, go uh, Just in terms of the high fire return fuel, I understand that uh, that has indeed been reprocessed and currently being uh, used as a source of electricity in German reactors. In Germany? In Germany, They yes. are planning on shutting down their entire reactor fleet, though but they're using our uh, uranium before they do that. All right, like I say, I'm a bit outside my brief, but I'll do a bit of research. Thanks for that Thank you. additional information. Um, are you still anticipating a shipment once every five years? I mean, the one less shipment, obviously, is welcome news, but it, what's the tempo? Of we'll the give tempo? you an indicative schedule on notice. Yeah, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. Um, Senator London, I'm just conscious of time. I have run the clock down. Can... I can submit a bunch of stuff on notice. Thanks. Terrific. Thanks, Thank, you, Thank you very much.